It's the Boomer's Brain Trust Show with Johnny Dean and Dinah Smith. Great education and great entertainment all in one. Call 877-PLANNER. 877-PLANNER, that's right, P-L-A-N-N-E-R. Johnny Dean and Dinah Smith is the Boomer's Brain Trust. Thanks for joining us today. We were talking uh, a little bit earlier about housing. Now, we all remember the housing bubble, right? Dinah, you were a part of it. I was a part of it. We were homeowners. We still are homeowners. Home values skyrocketed. Everyone was flush with house cash. There was money coming out of the chimneys. Uh, we all kind of lived high on the hog. Reality then set in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it all came to a crashing halt, and we're left with kind of the smoldering embers of whatever was left of our, 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 our housing uh, bubble there. Uh, Paul DaCosta joins us now on the Boomers News Hotline. Paul's a member of the Southwest Florida Real Estate Investment Association. He's also got the, he's host of a real estate education workshop radio show somewhere near Sarasota, Florida. Paul, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you taking some time on the Boomers Brain Trust. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, happy to do it. So I got to ask you because this, these are calls and questions that we get all the time on this show. First of all, do you see any real recovery in the national housing market right now? Yes. In some areas, you do see a true recovery. The ones that have jobs, you know, states like Texas and Tennessee and uh, believe it or not, New Hampshire, uh, in certain parts of Florida where there are high jobs, a uh, good job market, you're seeing a true housing recovery. You're seeing new houses being built. You're seeing other homes being uh, purchased. Mm -hmm. So, and now, uh, well, well, uh, here's I guess here's where I'm leading to on this. We 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 see a whole lot of foreclosures now. Now, of course, back in the in the, in the 2007 2008 somewhere around there, we saw a whole lot more I think than we saw now. But you're still seeing it in a lot of areas of the country. You got foreclosures. You got short sales. In some cases, people are just kind of walking away from their homes. Uh, again, we don't see it as uh, uh, probably as much as we did five six years ago, but it's still happening. How big of a burden is all that on the national housing market as a whole? It, it's a big burden because one of the problems that you have with it is that homes are sitting empty for long periods of time. And when that happens, not only does that house deteriorate, it also takes the property values of the homes around it or the neighborhoods around it. And it also puts a blight on them because you never know how long it's going to take and what's happening to, the, to those houses. And people wonder, oh, geez, you know, I don't know about buying a house in this neighborhood. How many more are going to go into foreclosure? And the other thing is people saying, well, you know, if all these homes haven't gone into foreclosure yet. I might be paying too high of a price. And all of a sudden, if the market changes again, now I'm stuck with a house upside down. Yeah, it, it, you mentioned boy, you mentioned neighborhoods. I mean, it seems like it, it, it's almost like a it's almost like a fire that's spreading from one house to the next. Because, and I've seen this too where I live. Uh, we had a house right next door. I mean, the, the the values were were starting to go up, and there was a foreclosure next door. It really had nothing to do necessarily with the overall real estate market, but one foreclosure next door. I was doing a refi, and all of a sudden, the value, uh, the appraised value of my home was probably cut by you know a good three or four percent, if not more. Uh, talk about how that really can affect neighborhoods as a whole. Oh, absolutely, because what happens is is when the appraisal's done and a bank is looking for financing, they look at this and go, well, wait a minute, there's nine houses within a half a mile of this area that, that's vacant in foreclosure. So I mean, those property house values are going to drop because when those houses eventually get foreclosed on, and then get resold, they're not going to get sold maybe at market price, they're going to get sold at discounted, and that means it's going to make this house upside down, and if we're doing a 97% loan to value, uh-oh, we're, we're buried, and, and it's just scaring everybody. Hey, Paul, with the market still being you know, relatively low, even though we're seeing you know, some markets coming back up, but with the overall housing market still being low, does it make sense to rent versus buy? I mean, it seems like more people are just being very cautious and saying, hey, I'll put out you know, $2,500 a month in rent as opposed to taking on this, this burden of a home where you know, home prices, or with home prices being kind of strange right now, it could be a lot more of a, a burden as far as the, uh, the monthly outgo Absolutely. I think a person really needs to sit down and talk to the, not only a financial planner, but, but to really look at, do they have the ability 
to buy a home, and yeah, they can get the financing, but mm-hmm. they, can they afford to keep the upkeep on the home? And remember, it doesn't get cheaper every year. Your property taxes go up, your homeowner's insurance goes up, and all of a sudden, if you buy a home that's 10 or 15 years old, now you're putting a new roof. Yeah, we're I, talking. We're talking with Paul DeCosta, the uh, our, our our national real estate expert. He's got a lot to say. We only got a couple of minutes left. Let me just ask you again, Paul. Uh, if you, what areas of the country are we really seeing? First of all, the most promising signs of a recovery, and where are we seeing it where it's really not? It, it hasn't moved much at all over the last five or six years. Yeah, I think some of the big areas you're seeing, obviously Texas, Tennessee, Georgia. The east coast of Florida, because there's a lot of jobs there. On the west coast, you're seeing a lot of retirees finally selling their houses up north and, and buying. Uh, I was just in Ohio. Certain parts of Ohio, you're seeing a lot. Uh, Seattle area, you're seeing a good a good mix where the home values are going up because people have good jobs there. They're, they're not everybody has a great job, but there's a majority, so they're feeling good about that. The areas that aren't doing still too hot, you still got Michigan area, you still got Ohio. You know, the Chicago area, a lot of places in the Northeast. Mm-hmm. You know, so a lot of those things make a difference. Uh, you know, how much does it cost to live in those states? How, you know, what are the taxes like? What are the job markets like? Right. So, all that makes a difference, and so you really need to do your due diligence if you're looking to move someplace I, I, and, look, I, and look for the future. I, I, I've got to ask you very quickly because we have a lot of listeners and viewers in the Las Vegas area, a lot in the in the Bay Area of San Francisco. I was talking about this uh, just a little while ago. Are we seeing at least some kind of decent recovery in areas like, say, Las Vegas? Yes, you are in Las Vegas. I think uh, what you're seeing there is a lot of the homes that were vacant and empty, they finally got foreclosed on or the big hedge funds have bought them. So now you're starting to see some changes in there. And I think in the long run, as long as the economy continues to to move forward, I think you're going to see places like Las Vegas continue to uh, uh, grow. Right. Maybe not leaps and bounds like they did, but you're still going to see them grow because of its proximity to California. Mm-hmm. It's close. It's relatively good weather. So I think that's what you're going to see. And the job market is, is getting really good there. Yeah, housing and the economy really seem to be tied together. Uh, 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 Paul DaCosta, thank you. Uh, if, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, if they have, say, off-air real estate questions, whatever, how can they get in touch with you uh, with regard to real estate? They can contact me through my website, which is www.pauljdacosta.com. And you can do email, you can phone, you can fax, you can do basically there's four or five ways to contact me through my website. Is that D-A-C-O-S-T-A? Do I have that right? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, just want to make sure. Paul J. DeCosta. Paul, thank you for it very much for being with us. I think we'll check in with you again when we need some more information on housing because it comes up all the time. We appreciate you being with us on the Boomer's Brain Trust. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for your time, and you all have a terrific day. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, Diana, th- th- once again, here's another topic that could go on and on. Oh, uh, we could spend an entire show talking about we housing. May, we may do that. Uh, thanks to Paul. I thank Professor Plum for joining us today. If you have more questions for him, you can call us, by the way, 877-PLANNER is our number, P-L-A-N-N-E-R, 877-752-6637. For Dinah Smith and the entire gang, I'm Johnny Dean. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the Boomers Brain Trust. We're talking about what's important to you, your money, your business, your life. This is Boomer's Brain Trust. The views and opinions expressed on the show are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors and should not be considered as legal tax or investment advice. You should always consult with the appropriate advisors before making any financial decision.